Good morning, Crossroads Life Church. How are you this morning? My name is Dave, and uh, well, just doing some laundry here and getting ready for church online. So glad that you can be joining us this morning. And uh, hey, just want to let you know that the chat window is open. It is at the right of your screen there. And uh, go feel free to chat on there if there is a uh, message or a point that you're just like, man, that was awesome. You can write on there, you know, hey, awesome job, or shout out, like, you can put amen in caps with three exclamation marks. And we'd know it's like, whoa, that's a great point. Uh, also, there's a heart button as well. Tap that heart button, light that heart button up. Again, if there is a point or whatever that you are just loving. And uh, anyways, it's awesome. So glad you could be here with us. Listen, there are also buttons on the screen that will guide you and lead you to our tithing, to our giving page. So if you're wondering, hey, how do I tithe? How do I give while I'm at church and whatnot? Well, there is a button there you can uh, push on the screen. We'll lead you to it. Also, uh, there is a button there for life groups. If you want to get involved with a life group, which I you know, encourage you, get involved with life groups. They're so good. Stay connected with people. See how people are doing. It's awesome. Also, one more thing. If you are new to CLC, if this is your first time and you're joining us for the first time, listen, we'd love to know that you're here. And uh, let us know that you attended church online by clicking on the Get Connected button, even if this is your church home. Folks, click on the button saying, Get Connected. Yo, I attended church. I was here. I was there. Church online. I didn't miss it. It was awesome. It was great. Also, church, we have new material geared towards superheroes and legends. Also, if you want the previous material, found um, it's all found on our website or at the top right of your screen. If you're watching live, click there is a button there and it'll take you there to keep the little guys uh, entertained while you sit at home, grab a cup of coffee, fold some laundry, just get ready to watch some church. You know what I'm saying? So good. So good. Good morning, Crossroads family. You know, just before we begin to worship this morning, um, I just want to remind you uh, that God's presence isn't confined to where we are or who we're around. You know, he's not, he's not confined to the four of us leading you in worship from the auditorium of Crossroads while you guys are all in your living rooms. You know, Jesus wants to meet with you this morning. He wants you to feel his presence. He wants you to encounter him. So just as we begin to worship, I just want to encourage you guys uh, just to stand up, sing, and uh, let's engage together. shadows step out of the grave and break into the wild and don't be afraid oh. run into wide open spaces graces waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted graces As you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom there is freedom in this place freedom yeah oh, oh. take all of your good Take all of his skies. Oh, come back to communion. Come back to the soil. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you to dance like the way has been lifted. Oh, graces waiting to wear the spirit of the Lord.
prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Come on, man. Chains will fall and prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. And lives made whole and hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. with major depression when I was about 14 years old and I continued on for about nine years all through my teenage years and early adulthood. Um, through that time I did go through some really really dark stages um, you know it wasn't very good. I was on antidepressants that whole time but of course those don't always work as well as they should and so when I was a young adult I started attending Crossroads and before we even had words of knowledge, after Sundays, sometimes I'd go up, uh, go up for prayer for depression and uh, leave, nothing had changed. And then we began having words of knowledge on Sundays after church. And every time there was a word of knowledge for depression, I would go up, you know, hoping, believing for uh, healing, and I would leave totally unchanged. That happened about four or five times until one time again there was another word for depression and this was actually the Sunday that I got healed but I remember thinking to myself seeing that word of knowledge and thinking okay like is it worth it do I really want to go up there waste that time um, and I you know I pushed that thought aside and said no I'm gonna go do it so I went up front and Julie Detman prayed for me and it was incredible you know I started crying right from the get-go which is really strange for me and it, it was clear to me God was moving and when she was finished, when I walked away from that prayer, um, I had this actual physical sensation of lightness. You know, the only way I can describe it is it's as if something really heavy was on my shoulders for a really long time and it had just been lifted off. It was this actual physical sensation. Uh, so that Sunday I was driving home. I told my husband, hey, I, I want to go off my antidepressants. I think I'm healed. And um, I went off that Sunday. That was the last time I ever took an antidepressant. And any other time I had tried to go off my medication, I would go through withdrawal symptoms, really cranky and irritable, but this time there was nothing. I stopped cold turkey, there was no withdrawal symptoms whatsoever, and I have been healed ever since. It's been four years of just incredibly, just feeling awesome and not depressed, which is amazing. And not only that, but um, when God healed me, you know, it was, a, it was a generational thing. There's generations in my family that deal with depression, but I've had multiple, you know, prophecies and confirmations that um, not only did God heal me, but He broke that generational chain with me. So I know that my kids are not going to be affected by that and they are not going to have to deal with the things that I dealt with. And I'm just so thankful to God that He healed me and I'm so thankful that He used CLC and Julie uh, just to bring about that healing and I am just so forever grateful for that. There is a sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's room As He walks into the room Where people pray And when we hear praises He hears faith He hears our faith He hears our faith He hears our prayers Our worship And there is a sound I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's room as He walks 
to the room where people pray and where we hear worship He is
Jesus, your love is highest name for me. All this heart is living for you. And broken, I run to you. For your arms, I'm open wide. Yeah. And I am weary, but I know your touch restores my Darkest night, you 
you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you that you are a God of miracles, that in your name 
all things are possible. And right now as a church in the same atmosphere of worship, we're gonna lift up a few things. We're gonna pray just as we were singing for awakening to come upon our region. We're gonna pray for awakening in Canada. We're gonna pray for safety in communities. We're gonna pray for our healthcare workers. We're gonna pray for wisdom for our government, amen. Can you join me and join us as we lift these things in prayer right now all across Midwestern Ontario or wherever you're tuning in from. Let's pray right now. Let's lift up these requests before the Lord because He hears our prayers. He hears our worship. He hears our faith. He comes as we call upon His name. So let's pray right now. Come on, church. It's not time to be silent. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lord. We know that you are a God of the impossible. You are a God of miracles, and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the hope that we trust in every day, in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, church. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We're so glad you could join us for CLC Online. If you're new to CLC, we'd love to get to know you. Simply click the connect button at the top right of your screen so we can get in touch. There's also buttons there to connect you to our giving page, our kids ministry video, life groups, our weekly newsletter, and more. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. We want to continue to trust God in this way. We have three options through which we can give this morning. Number one, we can give through Tithely, found on our app or on the link above. Two, we can give through Interact eTransfer, found through the link above, also on our website at myclc.ca forward slash give. Third, we can send checks through the mail, marked with your name and then designation. We're so glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service at CLC Online. Well, good morning, everybody. Great to see you all here. Uh, actually, I don't see you here. <laughs> you only see me here, but I'm pretending that I can see you all out there uh, through this video. You know, this, uh, this whole uh, social distancing thing is not without its humor. I was looking, a friend of mine from the United States, some of you know him, uh, Pastor Penn Clark, has a real penchant for finding humorous things. And um, I was looking at a number that he had posted this week, and some of them were just too funny. And one says, church notice. Since 500 people can now be in Home Depot at one time, this Sunday service will be held in plumbing. Thought you'd like that. Um, another one uh, <clears throat> that he posted on his Facebook says, I just saw people outside jogging. It motivated me to get up and close my blinds. Yeah, so uh, there's so many. The NFL is debating on a season without fans in the stadiums. They've reached out to the Bengals for advice on this. I know some of you will like that one. 
There's also another one here um, with uh, a picture of a, of a store where all the beer is kept. And it has a large package of toilet paper sitting in amongst the beer. And it says, a, de a decision was made here. I'm sure you're getting it all. So anyway, like I say, I love to, uh, we need a little bit of humor in, uh, in all this seriousness and serious issues. And I know that for some people, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a laughing matter if you're sick or if you've had a loved one who has passed away or something like that. And, and I certainly don't need to make light of it in that way, but we need to keep ourselves uh, in faith and also in humor. You know, I'm sure that we can all relate to being lost somewhere and having to stop and ask directions, uh, unless, of course, you're a man. And um, oftentimes, you know, we, Jan and I, when we're traveling, especially when we're on vacation, when we've gone to a, a city or a place that we don't, we're not familiar with, we carry a GPS, and it's, it's so much help, and we use those devices because we don't want to get lost, we don't want to waste time, usually we want to find the best uh, route to where we're going, and maybe one that doesn't, you know, that, that doesn't have tolls. And so direction uh, is, is important, not only in the natural, but direction is important on the road of life, too. And I think we've all likely uh, taken some wrong turns, wasted some precious time, um, not being properly directed to our destination in life. I believe part of what Jesus desires for us uh, of those who have who put their trust in him, is to direct us in life, to be someone who is guiding us, directing us. And directing people can be uh, a, a tremendous challenge, <laughs> even if you're God. You know, at times we pray uh, for God to lead and guide us, and then God bumps into our nature and into our human will. And we can choose to be self-directed, or we can choose to be God-directed. And many of us would say that we want God to direct us, and that is until he steps in and attempts to do that, uh, until he does uh, something that is maybe going to interrupt our plans. You know, being directed by God may mean that we have to abandon some of our plans for his. Uh, maybe we need to let go of some of our thinking. Maybe some of our thinking needs to change. Maybe uh, some of our preferences and our desires that we have uh, might really be nothing more than just kind of whims that we're, we, you know, we think we want something or we want this or the other thing. But sometimes really knowing and having God's direction in life requires that sometimes we need to let go of things. Jesus taught us to pray. When, when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, he said, Heavenly Father, and part of that prayer says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. And that's a good prayer, but consider this, that for his will to be done, someone else's will is not. We can't have it both ways. Many times we live in that tension between our will being done and God's will being done. And if we want him to direct us, we can't, you know, we just can't have it both ways. We, we pray the prayer sincerely. However, when it comes to letting go and letting God, we tend sometimes to cling to our preferences and our desires. But let me ask you this. Is it possible that God's will, uh, his direction, his best, his perfect plan sometimes is withheld from us because we're clinging to being self-directed? When you understand that whatever, wherever God sends you is a promotion, and whatever he asks you to do is a privilege, it becomes possible to get beyond that limited perspective. So there's actually a great deal uh, of scripture in the Bible about being directed by the Lord. And I want to look at some of these passages this morning. The first one is found in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16. We're going to put it up on the screen for you. And I've underlined some uh, points here that, you know, that kind of speak to him directing us. Isaiah 42, 16 says, I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. 
I will make darkness a light before them, crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. I want you to notice that he says, I'll, I'll bring the blind by a way they do not know. In a, lead them in paths they have not known. And of course, the scripture is referring to us as, as blind people in that sense, spiritually blind. If we want the Lord to lead us, we have to let kind of let go of that control, understanding that he's going to take us places that we have not been before. We haven't passed that way before. It's new to us. It's unknown. So we, there's a high degree of trust. The second scripture is found in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. So it's like, you know, not being sidetracked, but hearing the voice, that still small voice, that voice of Scripture that we have committed to memory, that we know, that we've read for many years, having the Lord speak to us, this is the way, walk in it. Proverbs 14, or uh, Proverbs 14, 18 says, uh, 4, 18 says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines even brighter or ever brighter unto the perfect day. Meaning that our path as Christians is actually getting brighter and brighter and brighty, brighter until the perfect day. We're not walking into greater darkness and greater darkness. You know, listen, the people of this world who are without God, that, that are alienated from the life of God, who do not know Jesus, who have not received him as their savior, and do not know God, they are walking in darkness, and the path is getting darker. But this scripture says that the path of the just, those that are living by faith and following Jesus, that's who the just are. The path of the just is, is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter, ever brighter, that we are actually living in brighter and brighter days, not darker and darker days. And Psalm 23, of course, a wonderful shepherd psalm says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, if, if you are being self-directed, uh, maybe instead of still waters, you're in a pile of mud. Maybe instead of being beside still waters, you're walking yourself into a storm. And the scripture says, he leads me beside still waters. He leads us in paths of peace. In fact, the scripture says that all his paths are peace. So this is about being directed. This is about being led, being directed. Proverbs 16, 9 says, a man's heart plans his way. You know, many of us have plans. We all think about our direction in life and what we're planning for in terms of our life. Man, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I don't know about you, but I want my steps to be directed steps. I have seen over the years uh, many times where the Lord has directed my steps, where I was walking right into something I didn't know, but God was leading it. And when I got there, I realized, wow, this was the hand of God. This would have been impossible. I never saw this coming, but it is good. Let me tell you one story. When I was uh, in sales many years ago, and we were facing a, uh, a very deep recession. So, you know, ever, ever since Jan and I got married, about every seven years, we had a pretty serious recession. So I have lived through several recessions. And uh, this was back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I was in sales. I was a, actually a sales trainer and a sales manager. And um, the company that I was working for, I was doing very well at, but the recession hit and suddenly our sales just tanked and you know I, my, my whole income was tied not only to my sales but the sales of those that I had trained and, and, uh, and that I was their sales manager. So sales were not good, it was tough. My wife said to me, listen, why don't you go and see you know, this, this young man that we knew who had started a used car company and it was out in a very small town. We were in the city of Hamilton. This was like about an hour away. And, you know, I don't know. I just, I didn't really listen to her. Let's just put it that way. And 
Uh, I waited, and a few weeks later, things were just getting worse. And she said, look, why don't you just go see this guy? So I went out to his place of business, walked in, uh, sat down with him, and told him that, you know, in fact, he, had, he was a customer of mine. He had purchased one of the products that I sold and had, you know, seen how I did sales presentations and so on. And so he said to me, you know, it's too bad you weren't here two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, and I'm thinking to myself, Jan told me to come two weeks ago, and I resisted the notion. But I didn't say that to him. I just said, okay, thank you very much. And I walked out kind of my tail between my legs. I was afraid to go home and tell Jan that he had told me, you should have been here two weeks ago. But uh, I did. And, um, and so I kept just kind of trying to eke out an existence in the business I was in. And about two months later, Jan says to me, why don't you go back out and see... Uh, his name was John, too. So he went, why don't you go out and see John again? And, and I said, honey, you know, he just, he just hired somebody. And uh, she said, well, maybe he didn't work out. So I thought, well, you know, <laughs> I don't want to lose out on this two times in a row. I better listen to the voice of my wife. So I went out, and sure enough, I sat down in front of him again. And he said, so you're still looking for a job? I said, yeah, I really am. And things are, are getting pretty desperate. And so he said, look, could you start tomorrow? And I looked at him, are you serious? Yeah. And he said, just lose the tie, wear a t-shirt, running shoes. That's how we do things around. That's how we roll here. And, um, and you're hired. Well, the next three years, uh, when I started with him, I was the second salesman outside of his family that he had hired. And he was, he was moving when he hired me. He was moving about 35 cars a month. Three years later, during the recession, his volume tripled. So needless to say, you know, I was directed in a time of recession where salespeople were being laid off left, right, and center and were, were having a very, very difficult time making a living. I was led right into a situation where this guy's volume tripled during a recession and he made no bones about the fact that he was a Christian, and it was a Christian dealership. He had a big sign on the wall that this business is dedicated to Jesus Christ. And he was a very honest guy. He took care of people, and he sold cars at a fair price. And his reputation just continued to grow and grow and grow. So I'm talking about times where there's times sometimes where we need our steps to be directed. I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what my family, I had a young family at that time. All three kids were born. I don't know what I would have done had the Lord not been directing my steps during that recession. And so today I want to talk to you about directed steps because many of us seek to be God directed, but sometimes we feel intimidated because of the process that we don't understand or uh, steps to being fully God directed or we, we're unsure of ourselves, we lack the confidence. But I want to tell you that the Lord will help you if you want to be God directed. I want to give you some real practical steps and I want to, you to look at uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Very, very, very well-known passage. Probably many of you could, could say it by rote. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Let's pray. Father, we thank You as we look into Your Word today, and we look at some of these uh, principles of being directed by God. Lord, our hearts are that you would direct us, that you would lead us, that you would be able to take us by the hand and lead us. And so, Father, we thank you today for this word, and I pray for everyone listening that they will hear what they need to hear today, and even answers to prayer, and things that will inspire them to be more God-directed in all of their decisions in life. And Father, we thank you for that. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. All right, four simple parts to this equation that we found uh, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. First of all is trust in the Lord with all your heart. We often, I find, even as a pastor, even with other church leaders, and working with pastors and leaders and people on staff, we often want more clarity, but God wants more trust. 
And so there's a tension there between clarity and trust. I think our struggle comes with the fact that we have this need uh, to, uh, and desire to control things and to control outcomes, to know kind of what it's going to work out before, how it's going to work out before we get there. We almost like want a written guarantee that if we, well, if we do this, is it going to work? Or I've heard people say, well, I tried that and it didn't work. Or I tried God's way and he, he disappointed me. He let me down. Listen, God is not bound to do what we ask him or tell him or want him to do. God is God. God looks at us as his children. And you know, my children had lots of requests, but I kind of felt like I knew what was in their best interest. And I also knew things that I felt weren't in the right timing for them or things that were just going to be a distraction to them or things that were unhealthy or things that they would abuse or things that they, they already kind of showed a little bit of track record for not, um, you know, maybe taking care of something. So there's all kinds of reasons why uh, God does not necessarily do what we want him to do. But I'll say this, thank God he doesn't. I thank God that he's God and I'm not. And so, again, uh, there's no guarantee of how things work out, but we are promised that he will guide us and direct us in these good paths. And so uh, there's a tension between clarity and trust. How much information do I need to trust God that something is going to work out and that he is directing me? Remind yourself of other times when you simply trusted, when you simply uh, stepped out and believed God and trusted God, knowing that he was prompting you or directing you or you felt directed in that way. Remind yourself of the testimony of other people who have trusted God over the years and you've seen that they are walking in good paths. They're walking in straight paths. Their life has worked out well. Their families have worked out well. Their finances, many other things, their character, their character strength, their, their personalities, many things about them are admirable and you, you look at them and say, you know, I really hope that one day I could be like that. Listen, remind yourself that God is completely trustworthy. Trusting God with all your heart means being all the way in, wholehearted in your trust, not half-hearted. So that's the first part of the equation. Maybe, maybe for some of us, that's the most difficult part is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Number two, lean not on your own understanding. This is, this is also a challenge for some of us. Lean not on your own understanding. When I told you the story about Jan, uh, I was leaning on my own understanding. She was saying, hey, go see this guy. And I can't remember really what was in my mind at that time, but for some reason, I resisted the notion thinking that, you know, that wouldn't work out or whatever. I was leaning on my own understanding. And then after going to see him once and kind of missing, knowing that I just missed it by two weeks, when my wife said to go back another time, I was tempted to, again, say, well, he's just hired somebody. Lean on my own understanding. But, Something spoke to me and said, you know, you, you already missed it once. Are you going to refuse to listen to her counsel again? And so I, I, in spite of my own understanding, thinking that I was probably going to walk in and walk back out empty-handed, I walked out with a job. This is an integral part of the equation. I think it's easy to say that we're trusting in the Lord with all our heart, but actually allow a certain degree of self-deception to enter in. We're, we're used to leaning on our own understanding for many things in life because we know what we want. I mean, I don't pray about what I want for breakfast. I don't pray about the clothes I'm going to wear or even the clothes I'm going to buy. Many times we don't pray much even about major decisions and major expenditures in life. Some people take on massive amounts of debt and we just do a number of things because it comes out of our enculturation. What I mean by that is that we live in a culture that encourages that. So, you know, most people have credit cards because someone told them that they had to establish their credit worthiness. We use debit cards instead of cash. Why? 
because we've been conditioned that way by people who have their own best interests in heart that want us to get into debt and want us to, to use credit and have be in debt so that they make more money. We live in a credit society. We live in a debt society. And uh, I, I don't want to get off on that, but I just want to say that because we've been conditioned that way, we make decisions out of that. However, these and many other things we really need to lean into God's wisdom and, and trust him. And even when it seems counterintuitive to us, if you truly want to be directed by him, then you need to trust him and not lean or rely on your own understanding. Why? Because you and I have a very limited understanding of life. Let me ask you a simple question. How many of you knew that COVID-19 was going to literally shut down our world in a matter of like one month? How many of you knew that in advance? How many a year ago or six months ago knew that this was going to happen? You know, I, don't, I would say that if all of you were here today, nobody's hand would be going up. How many of you knew that if you were going to be laid off, if, if you've been laid off, you know, or that your children... <laughs> we're not going to be going to school for probably half or, or more of the year, that your schools were going to be closed. How many knew that? Nobody knew that. And so how many knew that you would be social distancing and that you'd be literally in lockdown inside of your homes and unable to kind of connect with people and walk up and give them a hug, shake their hands, uh, just go to the grocery store and walk around as you normally do, that you'd be standing in lineup six feet apart, making sure that... You don't come in close connection with people. I mean, how many, how many of us saw that coming up on our radar? How many saw that into the foreseeable future? Well, you and I had no way of seeing that coming. But think about this. Think about this. God knows, and he knows also how to prepare us for things. You know, we had a prophetic word in 2016. The word was debt eradication that God said that he was going to show us a way, if we would listen to him, that he would be able to eradicate our debt. And it was really a word to the church, but also about the church. And so if I ask you a question, how many of us took that word to heart? How many of us treat prophecy in a way that we kind of listen to it, we weigh it, and then we say we, we, you know, really hold fast to that which is good and begin to pray about it and begin to, you know, kind of ask the Lord how he's going to fulfill what his word is. Well, Jan and I took that word to heart. And you've heard this before, but we really began to uh, pray over our finances and we, used to, we would speak that prophetic word, eradication over our debt. And somehow within one year, our entire mortgage was paid off. And then we began to say, well, hey, this applies to the church too. And so we began to pray, and I began to look at, you know, our, our budget, and every month I'd be praying into that eradication. We had a mortgage on the church, and uh, it was going to be renewed in 2019. And so late fall and into the beginning of the year, I'm looking at that amount, and I'm saying, I don't see a way that we can pay this off but I'm going to continue to believe God. I don't see with my mind, I don't see the possibilities, how the numbers could do it. I don't see any way, but I'm going to believe God. I'm going to pray about this, and I'm going to go after it because I have, I'm armed with a prophetic word that God says, this is what I'm going to do. And so as we went over, obviously, you know, last summer in 2019, together, we eradicated the debt on the church. Now, Standing here, where we are now, it's amazing because the church is debt-free. And I will admit that, you know, in addition to, to the, the, the church debt, I, uh, I, will, I will tell you that I felt considerable pressure on me to help us move forward into a building project for, uh, for probably the last four or five years. I felt this pressure on my heart. It's not because of anybody else. It's just... You know, we had talked about it. We began to pray into it and plan into it. And I just felt like it was not moving uh, as quickly as I had hoped. And it's, it just didn't seem to be moving the direction I'd hoped. Well, thankfully, 
we did not lean on our own uh, understanding. Uh, thankfully, we didn't just, you know, uh, move forward and go to the bank and get ourselves into a mountain of debt. Where would that put us today? But as elders in this house, we did not lean upon our understanding, but we took the word that God gave us through prophecy. We did not move ahead when we heard nothing on the building. And I would say that God knew what was coming. And the truth of the matter is, again, where would we be today had we gone down to the bank and said, okay, you know, we've got so much in the bank and we're going to finance so much and we're going to raise so much in pledges because that's what many churches had told me and some people, even in our church, told me that they'd heard of other churches that had, had kind of worked that formula. You have so much that you raise in cash, so much that you finance, and so much that you raise uh, by pledges. Well, had we done that today in this environment, uh, we would be under immense pressure as a church to, pay, to service all that debt. And so it didn't, it didn't look like things were going well. It, it, but I, didn't, I could not get a word. I could not get clear direction on the building. And so, as I say, I felt, I felt uh, under pressure because of that. Now, I'm not boasting, except in the wonderful way in which God directs our paths when we fully lean upon him and do not lean upon our own understanding. And so as a result of that, our church is actually positioned very well to uh, weather this current situation. Uh, letter C, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Now, the Hebrew word for acknowledge is, is the word yada. Yes, the word yada. And it means to see, to perceive, to know, to acquire knowledge, and to be acquainted with. In fact, it's actually used uh, in terms of a man knowing a woman intimately, that same term. But it's used here on a spiritual level, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So in all your ways, in all that you are going about to do in life, in, in the major decisions of life, in the things that you're planning, your, your kind of 10,000 foot level plans, your long range, three year, five year, 10 year plans, if you have those things, know him in them. Bring him and his light and his word and his spirit and his influence in on it before making those kind of decisions with your limited understanding and foresight. You might be making a good decision, but you might be missing something that he actually wants to direct you into that you maybe would never think of or that you would consider to be, you know, I would never do it that way. Well, that's okay because he said he will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. So don't be afraid of the unknown. Be afraid of not acknowledging him, not knowing him in the situation, bringing him in. You know, we, we talk about the scripture in the New Testament says that be anxious for nothing, but by everything with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known. That's how we bring God into everything. We bring it before him in prayer. We pray about it. We, we lift it to the Lord. Um, large decisions need some large prayer and, and some consideration, some wisdom and some counsel. And God can direct us but we have to be willing to be directed. And finally, letter D, he shall direct your paths. So, you know, if, if you put it all together, if you uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, do not lean upon your own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways, not just some of your ways, but in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths. And this is what the Lord has done throughout the Bible throughout Scripture. The Bible exists as a living witness and testimony of God's leading people, directing people, saving people, rescuing people, uh, providing for people, bringing them across the Red Sea on dry ground, delivering armies and mighty kings into their hands. God has been directing people for a long time, and he is still doing it today. Some translations render this verse, he will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. He will guide you on right paths. Do you want to be guided in right paths? Do you want to be guided on straight paths in a crooked world? Having the Lord direct your steps starts with bringing him into everything and 
Sometimes, sometimes, waiting on him. I could have, I could have just, you know, steamrolled ahead um, with a plan for our building and and gotten ourselves, you know, gotten ourselves into a bit of a pickle. And I could have just, you know, kind of promoted that and and got people excited about a big plan and and let's just go do this and let's go talk to the bank. But I just wasn't getting, I knew I was not getting an inner leading from the Lord. And so I just had to wait. And I thought, well, I'll wait as long as it takes to wait. I'm not going to step out in something like this without sensing a clear witness in my heart. So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we actually have to wait on the Lord and wait on his timing. And, And if we do wait, we will find out like we have here in this situation, that there was a really good reason for waiting and the timing was not right at all. And who knows what lies ahead. We may have some tremendous opportunities when it comes to all this stuff. So, you know, having the Lord direct you obviously starts with knowing Jesus as Lord. It begins with turning your life over to him and acknowledging that we are lost in sin without him, that we are blind, that we are poor, that we are miserable, uh, and, and without him. You know, Jesus is not an add-on feature. Jesus is Lord of all. He's already paid for you and for me when he went to the cross, and he's already, he's already been made the Lord and the King. And his name is the only name whereby we can be saved from eternal consequences of our sin. His name is exalted above every name, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. Not so that he can dominate us or destroy us, but so that he can obtain mercy and grace and salvation and wisdom and direction for our lives. If you want to continue on in your own way and be self-directed, Uh, your own understanding is going to limit you because you have a limited amount of understanding. You have a limited perspective as a human being. But if you want God to direct your path and make your path straight in a crooked world, you're about to have unlimited resources working on your behalf. Think about that. God is not limited. He can use all kinds of resources. He can move things into place. And he can set things in motion for you and for your family and for your loved ones. And so, you know, he is still the one who knows all things. And interestingly enough, he's the one who knows you best and still loves you the most. So that's amazing. Now, if you're ready for that, and maybe you just know that your life has not been self-directed and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. I wonder if maybe we could just take a moment right now and you could pray with me and pray to receive Jesus Christ. Ask Him to come. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It starts with calling on Him. He is the Lord. He is God. He's present. He's with you right now. And He can hear your prayer and He can see your heart. And so I'm going to take a moment right now, and if that's you, if you have, I want to say this, if you have never, ever before prayed to receive Jesus Christ, you're going to see on the screen a little place where you can hit a button that says you want to commit your life to Christ. And I'm just asking if you've never done this before, this would be the time to do it, and and let's pray together. And maybe you could repeat this prayer after me as much as you feel that this is an expression of your heart. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for my sins and to give me a new life. And I want to follow you and I want my life to be directed by you. I want to do your will. Help me now Come into my life, save me, forgive me, lead me and guide me, and make me who you want me to be in Christ. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Amen. And again, if you've prayed that prayer, I'd so appreciate it if you'd take a moment 
and push that button. Let us know. And there's a form that you can just give us your name, contact information. We just like to uh, encourage you in the Lord and also uh, help you understand what's available here at CLC that can help you grow as a Christian. We have a purple book class that is really excellent class for those who are new to the Bible, new to Christ, new to the church. And then as, as we close this morning, I want to speak to the rest of us who, who are Christians, who have known the Lord, but you may realize that you've not been fully trusting Jesus to direct you. Maybe you have really uh, fallen back into a kind of a self-directed life where you're not really acknowledging him in all your ways the way you really should be to be directed by God. And maybe as you have heard this message today and we've hit these four points, you could point to one or all of them and say, yeah, you know, I, I really have not been fully engaging uh, in those areas. And so I just simply want to pray with you today and help you to reconnect your faith with Jesus, who wants to direct you, who wants to guide your steps. As we, as a world, head into uncertain times and uncharted waters, we need direction. God has promised to give us direction. The question is, will we allow him to direct us? Will we acknowledge him in all our ways? Will we stop leaning leaning into our own understanding and our limited knowledge. Sometimes we think we know so much, but the truth is, in the big things, we know so little. And so it's not making decisions based on your whims, your desires, or your wants. And if you want to do that, then why don't you pray with me right now. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We just admit that we have not fully followed you. We have not fully surrendered. We have not fully acknowledged you in all our ways. So today, we're asking you, Lord, that you would just redirect our path, redirect our heart, and help us to make a decision today that we are going to acknowledge you, that we're not going to lean upon our own understanding. We're not going to just let our understanding be what make what the, our final decisions are based on, but we're going to acknowledge you in all our ways and bring you into things and actually seek you and pray and say, Lord, direct us, lead us, give us understanding. Flood the eyes of our heart with understanding so that we have a better appreciation for what is really happening and the decisions we need to make. Lord, we just thank you that you love us. We thank you that you want to guide us through life. You want to direct us. You want to be the one who is leading us. Lord, help us to be leadable. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Well, it's been great to be with you this morning. I want to remind you that at 6 p.m. tonight, we have another prayer summit. We are looking forward to it. Please tune in. Uh, You'll be able to catch us through Facebook, our Facebook group. And um, we are are looking for just a wonderful time, worship and prayer. And uh, we want to be with you tonight in that way. So thank you so much for joining us. And we're trusting that we're going to have a great time together. Pray that you just have a great week and uh, that you continue to be able to just uh, adjust and be at peace in the times that we are living in right now. God bless you. Love you all. Can't can't wait to see you. And hopefully we'll be talking on the phone with some of you this week. Blessings.